So hi, everyone. I am Connie Zavo Schmucker. I am Advocacy Director for Bicycle Garage Indy. Welcome to our Bicycling Lunch and Learn. And we've got two presenters talking about going by bike. Um, so bicycling for transportation. Pete Fritz is going to talk first um, and go through the 10 myths of using your bike for everyday transportation. And then Ross Reinhardt is going to talk about his um, experiences bicycling. This is the second to last of our Lunch and Learns uh, for 2022. Our next month is about riding in the cold and dark, um, which will be timely because it'll be cold and colder and darker there mm -hmm. uh, next month. Uh, these are recorded as well, and you can find previous recordings and previous programs on IndieBikeHub.org. Um, there's links to them there. And I'll, once I put this, once we are done and I get the recording, I'll put this up on that site as well. So you can refer back to it if you want or share it with other people. Um, and this, uh, the Bicycling Lunch and Learns are, uh, it's a partnership between Bicycle Garage Indy, Bike Indianapolis, Central Indiana Bicycling Association, Commuter Connect and the YMCA. So um, without further ado, so what, what we're gonna do is Pete's gonna go through his presentation, Ross is gonna go through his, and then we're gonna have um, just a really informal Q and A, um, any, any questions or any comments or any experiences anybody wants to share at that point. Um, and so I will turn this over to Pete. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and, and Pete can go ahead. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks, Connie. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Pete Fritz. Um, so in my, in my work life, uh, I am the Healthy Communities Planner with the Indiana Department of Health, uh, the Division of Nutrition and Physical Activity. Um, I work downtown and I ride my bike to work most days when I can. Um, uh, and I have, I have worked in downtown Indianapolis for certainly over 30 years. Most of those, most of that time I've been a bike commuter. So I've seen a lot of changes in, in the, um, the accommodations for, for bicycling and using your bike for everyday transportation around Indianapolis. And I'll have to say right now, it's probably about the best as it's been. Um, if you take out all the construction issues, it's pretty good. Uh, uh but it's, uh, but I've, I've worn out a few bikes through the years doing this kind of work um, and just riding it for every day. So what I've got, I've got a few slides to kind of just introduce this idea of uh, using your bike for everyday transportation. And I think a lot of people, if they're looking at wanting to do this more, or even if you're starting to use your bike for kind of just everyday riding to destinations, there are a lot of um, kind of myths that are barriers to this, to doing that. Um, and uh, they, they still trip me up every now and then. And I have to be reminded that this doesn't have to be as hard as sometimes we think it is. <laughs> but um, but uh, I'm using this as a theme, Mythbusters. I know that's a little dated, but I think there's, I think you can still find them somewhere on cable, I'm sure, um, but the, they're still around. Um, and um, I'm gonna use this kind of Mythbuster theme as, uh, as we talk about these 10 myths. So one of them. One of them is a lot of people approach this and they think I'm just I, I'm not in good enough shape to, to start riding my bike most days to commute or go to the grocery or just use it for every day, you know, trade a driving trip. But really, um, you know, early when I started riding, that was my concern. But the but you don't have to do it all at once. You can start out with a, a half commute or a shorter trip and combine it with either transit which I do quite a bit now even um, because all of our buses in Indianapolis have bus racks on, uh, or bike racks on the front. Um, and then you can lengthen it. And it's, it's, if, you, if you're lucky enough to live close to a bus route, um, that's really a convenient way to do it. I do that a lot when there's inclement weather, especially when it's cold and it's cold in the morning. Sometimes I'll take the bus in and then I'll you know, ride home. Um, you can also test your ride on a, on a weekend or an off day if you want, or to any, any of these kind of destinations you might want to go to on maybe a time when it's not so busy or it's a little bit less stressful. Um, and you can, you don't have to ride fast. Um, 
you can ride at an easy pace. And even at an easy pace, most bike commuters, you know, you, you can uh, still get the fitness benefits from that. I know, um, you know, I ride a big heavy steel bike that I can kind of, you can, I can ride over gravel, I can jump curbs um, and I don't ride real fast, um, but I, I still get the benefits of that. Um, and um, it's not, it doesn't have to be a race. Although I see a lot of people at bike commute that do ride really fast and you can, if you want, uh, you can, you can ride um, as fast as you want, but you don't have to. Um, a lot of people think it, it takes too long bike riding. It takes too long. You know, I'm going to lose time out of my day. Um, but when, when you start, and I, I've noticed this as even I, I notice this every season, uh, sometimes, you know, if it in the winter, I don't necessarily ride as much. Some people ride, uh, you know, all the same all year, but I, I tend to not ride quite as much, even though I ride all year. Um, I start to ride faster as I get into the summer because I get in a little better shape. Um, but um, you, most people ride 10 miles an hour and uh, it, it doesn't take too long when you start to just think about it in that way. And a bike trip can actually these days with construction can be faster or equal to driving. And I've noticed that working downtown that many times I can, especially during peak traffic, I can get home about the same amount of time it takes me to, to walk to my parking space, drive through traffic, through construction to home. I can get there just as fast to ride my bike, sometimes faster. And then trading a bike commute, um, when you think about the fitness benefit, if you're trading that for working out in a gym, you're certainly are, are saving time and money because uh, you can you can use that uh, that commuting time as your workout, which which I certainly do. A lot of people think it's too far, and again, what I too far to to commute to destinations, and and this is an issue in suburban areas of Indianapolis. I you know it's things are spread out here. A lot more than they are, say, in Chicago, New York City, other other metro areas, although they have sprawling suburbs, too. But we're lucky to have buses. Like I said, you can trade a bus trip for part of your bike trip, um, and that makes it so it's a little more manageable. Um, we talked about that with driving halfway. Um, and sometimes I've done this where I've even, you know, traded um I've, I've put my bike in my car, came to work, parked, rode home, and combined any number of combinations of bicycle car trips for, for any number of things. I've even done that for some small kind of um, bike overnight stuff that I've done, where I've done bike travel. Um, so there's a lot of ways to combine, you know, different modes of transportation with your bike. And that's what's nice is bikes are relatively, you know, uh, mobile. You can take them along with you, especially if you have a folding bike, um, which I have a small folding single speed bike that I can, I take with me a lot of different places. Um, and um, so the other one is that this is, um, oh, sorry, that, that you don't have a place to store your bike. And that can be a problem. Bike parking in some areas of Indianapolis is a problem. It's getting better. We have a lot more bike parking than we've used to have. And, and, and there are a number of groups that are monitoring that and trying to get more bike parking. But there's lots of places to put your bike. I know I've, through the years and different places I've worked, I've stored my bike in, in coat closets inside, mixed in with coats. Right now where I work, we have an old abandoned electrical, uh, electrical closet that's a door off an alley that has key card access. And I can get in there and store my bike. It's a great place, it's lit. It's safe and secure, and we're I'm lucky to have a place I can park my bike. Um, but some some places it's an issue. Um, but if you look around and be creative, and even ask your employer, most of the times they'll let you find a place to put your bike. Um, and uh, and and most employers uh, see that as this is a good thing. If you're riding your bike to work, it it it's good for your health, and it's good as an employer to see their employees doing that. Um, and or ask for a play, ask for a bike rack, to, you know, outdoors. I know in our, you know, at the state health department, um, our, our landlord put in bike racks out front at, at their cost um, and they're always full. So they don't cost much to do it either. Just a few hundred dollars to get a bike rack in. It's a lot cheaper than putting in parking space for a car. Um, a lot of people say, well, I don't, have, I don't have good equipment. I have an old beat up bike. But the thing is, sometimes those are the best bikes for commuting. 
old heavy steel steel bikes make really good commuter bikes um and may and and most many of them have you know have uh eyelets for putting on racks for putting on fenders um and all those kind of things that make it easier and more comfortable to ride um so uh, so you can find those many places and i was just in the bike shop the other day and he saw somebody an old trek 520 that somebody was making into a commuter bike it didn't cost that much to overhaul an old steel frame bike um and find again find a good bike shop to tune it up i know um there's um we have downtown bike shops we have bike shops on many communities right outside of downtown and find a good reputable local bike shop um, that can help it fit to you and make sure it's reliable and, and in good working order before you ride. Um, last thing you want to do is, is be halfway to work and realize something that you could have easily fixed at home. You have a problem now. Um, so I usually have a little routine every, you know, most times before I go out, I, I check my tires. Sometimes I'll just pick up my bike and bump it to make sure nothing's rattling on it. Cause sometimes a rattle is a good indication that something's wrong. Um, and those kind of simple things or habits you can get into um, can save you time when you might have a mechanical issue. Um, a lot of people are concerned about showering. Um, I've, I, I have done this. I, we have a shower room in the basement where I work now, and I have done that for many years. Lately, I haven't even really used that. I, I just wear, you know, comfortable kind of, um, I, I do many, I do, will change my clothes when it's hot. So I'll wear shorts. And uh, you know, wicking wicking shirt, but I pack my work clothes and I just change. I usually change in a conference room, which is kind of creepy, but that's what I do. But you can uh, usually you can find a place to change and at work. And you may or may not need to take a shower, but I, I'm lucky if I need to that we have showers in our basement uh, for our employees. Um, and you can just a lot of times you can just kind of clean up as you go. Um, and this is an old reference to the bike hub at, at the city. Why I know that closed over the pandemic. They they did have showers, but there's other places. Uh, there's other workout places. Even at some of the hotels have like a bike commuter type or a, run, a lot of uh, their programs are made for runners where you can get access to a shower and a towel for a fee. And they're really cheap. I don't know. It's not that much. But yeah, that's another option is uh, if you have, you know, someplace like a hotel or a, or a workout facility, they can offer discounted shower use only. That's all you want to do. Um, and then dressing up. This is this is still an issue for some people. I know I'm having to, you know, comply with some work related dress issue, dressing issues, but not so much anymore, um, but I, but certainly I can't spend a whole day in my shorts and you know bike shoes at work, so I have to put something on that's a little more work appropriate. But I know a lot of people keep multiple sets of clothing at work. If you have an option to do that, if you work in a cube it, like I do, it doesn't really work that way. Um, um, some people you, you can use a you know local cleaner to do that, but I just pack my clothes with me and I change at work, and that work that that. That's really feasible. I just I plan all this the night before because the last thing I want to do when I'm tired in the morning and I wake up is try to figure all that out. So I have it all packed out and ready to go. Um, and I've learned that through the years. For me, that's the way, best way to work. Spend that time the night before, and I'm ready to go. Um, so rain and snow is it is is a real issue to contend with if you're going to be commuting or just biking for everyday transportation. One of the first things I did is you know I had a I started commuting with a steel, um, kind of a fast type racing bike that did not have fenders. And I quickly learned when I rode through a couple of, you know, rainstorms that fenders would be kind of nice to have. Uh, and I ended up adding fenders and, you know, and, and, um, and bought a bunch of good rain gear as well. And that just is uh, for comfort and practicality. Um, and, but if it's, um, if you're already there at work and the and or at your destination and the weather changes, you can always take transit or some other way to get home. Um, I've done that many times, or sometimes just you just need to either take transit or drive and give up on bike. I have to say there are days where I just you know I'd love to ride, but it's not working, and you know sometimes you have to do that. But most of the time, I can make it work. Um, getting close to the end here. Some people are concerned about safety, that the roads aren't safe where they're riding. Um, this is becoming kind of, it's getting better here in central Indiana, but 
you know, if you're if you're riding, following the rules of the road, follow traffic signals, riding on the right, um, stop at stoplights. I haven't I haven't really found that it's that big of an issue um, if you just you know follow the rules of the road and do what you're supposed to do. Certainly, um, wearing bright clothing helps. Um, I I don't know that everyone has to be kitted out in full kind of day glow outfits, and I you know because I think that discourages some people from riding. If you have to always wear these bright clothes, I I ride and I I have a, a sleeveless con, you know construction vest like a, a surveyor's vest I do wear, and that's fine with me. It's 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 very lightweight. Air goes through it. Um, and I just feel comfortable wearing that when I'm riding on the street. If I'm on a trail, most of the time I won't do that. Sometimes on a hot day, I'll take it off if I'm on a trail. Um, but but that's just whatever makes you feel comfortable. Certainly lights are, are really important. And um, I've got right now on, on my main commuter bike, I've got a front generator hub that I use that generates the front and back lights. So I don't even have to worry about it anymore. It uh, it has two, two brightness. It has a day run setting that automatically is on during the day, a nighttime setting, and uh, it's on all the time. And I, that's what I like about that setup is I don't have to worry about it. But I also have another setup of uh, rechargeable lights that I use on another bike, um, and those work fine, too. So, so just always have that available. And I have backup lights for both sets because I have had times where my generator light fails for whatever reason. And I've got another light that I can just use if I need to. So having backup lights and having a safe route is really important too. Um, and knowing alternative routes when construction happens and things like that. Um, using RideSpot, Google Maps, the Indie Ride Guide, is, they're all, these are all good. And I still use those all the time when I'm riding around town and trying to get from different points. And then finally, um, you're saying, well, I have to run errands and the car is the easiest way for me to do that. But but certainly, you know, you can make your bike um, very, very amenable to carrying any number of things. When, I love this image of these these uh, these bike moves that people do in Portland where they come out and they move a whole house using uh, trailers and all this kind of stuff. And uh I haven't seen that much here, but uh, I know people do it. So I have a rack. I have a front basket, which was a real game changer for me when I put a basket on the front of my bike. Um, and it, some people think they look a little nerdy and things like that. But man, it, it really it stabilizes my bike really nice when I have weight on that front wheel also. Um, and it's a way to manage the, the weight load on my bike when I'm carrying multiple things. And I really like that. I also have a, a trailer that I like um, that I can carry groceries. I can carry a case of beer back there if I want to. Um, and the trailer has been a game changer too for making grocery runs. I can pretty much do a regular grocery run uh, with my bike trailer. And having a good lock, you know, making sure you can lock up wherever you need to is really important to make it predictable, plan in advance. And uh, one thing that but if you're at work is ask your employer to provide like uh, loaner bikes. And I lo I lo there are a lot of employers in downtown Indy that have bikes that their employees can use um, for, for errands around town. And um, I would probably use that sometimes if I wouldn't have to go in the bike closet, get my bike out, get all, you know, and, and run. And Aaron, I know I can use bike share, which I have done before too, which is really good. But um, having a lot of choices makes it easier. Uh, having a lot of choices on how to get around by bike. And the more, I think, the better. So, um, so that's all I have. One, just the final slide is, so why do I, why do I do this? And then uh, Ross can kind of talk about his experience as well, but I do it to save money. Uh, I save at least a thousand, over a thousand dollars a year um, by transferring, you know, a, a car commute with a bike commute and other everything else. I keep telling my wife I should be able to get a new bike every year, but she doesn't let me do that with all that money I'm saving. But it still helps to maintain the bikes I have, my little fleet, my garage, and everything else. I usually, um, I, I do it for physical activity. Um, it has really helped me to maintain uh, my weight by having my bike commuting. Um, that's the basic the way I work out. So it it really has helped me. I like being an example. I do this kind of uh, 
physical activity promotion in my job. So this helps me to kind of um, to be an example in my everyday life of what I do at work. And I think it's for me, it's a, it's a way to to be sustainable, not to drive so much. I don't put any miles on my car and it's just really fun. And I'm lucky that I have a place to put my bike. I've got a boss that supports this. She, she commutes to work sometimes too. Um, and I've, I've made really good friends uh, with bike commuter groups through the years that we've stayed in touch. Uh, we know each other's families. We've gone to our kids' weddings and everything. It's, it's really a, a, a really good social group that I, um, I'm really lucky to have. And it's, um, it's just fun. So that's all I've got. Um, and at this point, I will stop sharing and uh, let Ross talk a little bit. Awesome. Well, thanks for that. It's, uh, we're going to go from the position of lots of experience to I have a lot, um, a much more of a recent comer to um, getting around on my bicycle. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I am a uh, Hoosier born, born in Indiana. I grew up in Indiana and um, you drove uh, everywhere my entire life um, and hadn't really thought so much about the fact that I could get around on my bicycle. I uh, loved visiting mountain biking. Um, before they even had uh, the Brown County trails, we'd go and find places to ride bikes, mountain biking. Um, and as I got older, I found that life got busy and I wasn't able to go mountain biking as much. And it um, made me quite sad to not get on my bicycle. Um, I really enjoyed those times we could go ride. and. Um, over, over time, you know, life got busier and busier, hardly ever made it mountain bike anymore. And one day it occurred to me that, um, you know, you could ride your bike to places, you know, just around that you have to go in life. Um, and I'm not sure why it took me so long to think of that. Um, and it was, it kind of felt like a, just an interesting, it, it was a new thing. It, um, so I, I tried riding my bike to um, the library nearby. We live in Fishers, um, Indiana. Um, and so I was like, well, maybe, maybe I could take my bicycle to the library. And it almost felt like I was, um, going on this adventure, going someplace that, you know, charting uncharted territories. Uh, it felt so different from, um, just what I'd been used to my entire life driving there. Um, which was, it was, it was, it was fun. It was, it, I was a little bit nervous. Um, and, and so I did that. I was riding my, my mountain bike. Um, I'll actually, I want to see if I can share my other desktop here so you can, can kind of see. I've got some pictures of some of these. Um, so, you know, I, I had this mountain bike. This is, it's not a really top end mountain bike, but it, it was, it's my, uh, I've, I've loved it. And it was what I rode around a lot before. And so I tried to go to the library on this. Um, and, you know, it was fun. Uh, it was a new world, um, but it wasn't super, I, I, it wasn't super comfortable. You know, it felt a little different. You know, I had to wear a backpack and um, you're kind of in a mountain biking stance, which, um, you know, there isn't too many mountains to be crossed between here in the library in Fishers, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that first experience was, um, was something that piqued my interest. So I started uh, thinking about maybe other places I could ride. Um, and then a kind of a confluence of events happened where, um, you know, they've, they've been working kind of around town to make it safer to get places and putting in uh, some more infrastructure. Um, things have gotten kind of a little denser near where I live in Fishers. So there's more things, places you can get to um, in a, in a closer radius. Um, and the other thing was that I ended up kind of running into this whole other world of um, bikes that weren't a, a racing bike or a mountain bike. Um, so here's, here's the bike that I ended up getting eventually. Um, I ran across, uh, a YouTube video. There's this channel called not just bikes. Um, so it's ironic that I ran across something about a bike on it, but he, uh, had done a segment that was talking about, um, this style of, of bicycle, um, that is common in the Netherlands. And, um, you know, you see it in the UK and you're sitting more upright. Uh, you're, it's not great for aerodynamics. You're sitting just bolt upright and riding around. Um, but you can, you know, carry stuff on it. Um, and that got me really interested because, you know, riding around on my mountain bike didn't feel, you know, as, as comfortable. Um, so I got, ended up getting one of those bikes and that kind of in a confluence with the other factors, um, really changed like how I understood getting around, um, on a bicycle. Now it may it felt like a natural way for me to sort of, I just need to go there so I can step on this bicycle, um, and go there. 
uh, it also kind of changed a little bit how I uh, prepared to go bicycling. Um, when I would get on my mountain bike, I would usually, you know, get on some kind of uh, athletic gear. Um, and I found myself more and more just kind of uh, dressing for the destination, I guess you could say, where um, I would just get on my bike and flip flops and, you know, whatever I had on um, and, and just go. And that started to feel kind of really fun. Um, it's something that uh, it's a particular fun thing. If you if you have to dress up to go somewhere, um, I went to a city council meeting the other day and I wanted to wear a sport coat. Um, you get a lot more mileage out of dressing up when you're sitting on uh, your bicycle riding there because you get to say hello to a lot of people along the way. And, um, you know, if you're in your car, nobody can see you're dressed up. So <laughs> uh, that's kind of a fun experience. If you're ever looking for you can just get dressed up and go ride around um, to go to council meetings. Um, yeah, so that that was that was kind of a pivotal moment for me something that really hooked me the, the couple things that really hooked me once once i knew that i found places i could get around safely um it was it was really largely the social aspect um something that i didn't anticipate was how much uh, going somewhere became a social activity um, when i would drive to target you get in your car and you sit in your car and listen to the radio and then you get there and you park and you go into target um, <laughs> But uh, when I ride my bicycle, um, you end up having all these little conversations along the way, or at least just smiling and nodding to people. Um, I go past a playground and you hear, you know, the kids giggling and playing. And uh, a lot of times they, they might wave to you and point at the bicycle. Um, you you uh, end up having conversations. Uh, you know, I when I go to get groceries, you end up uh, there's somebody that collects carts from the parking lot and he loves to say hello every time I pull in he'll, he'll just from across the parking lot he'll call out um, hello as I pull in um, and just the other day as I was parking somebody who was taking a break on a park bench started a conversation um, as I parked so you end up with uh, it ends up being a social experience that um, for me particularly I'm not an extrovert um, I tend to be more introverted and uh, to have um, a lot of these little connections to people around the city um, really was a, a mental health boost to me. Um, you know, you might be feeling a little cloudy and down, uh, but if I get on my bicycle and run to Target, you know, it, it's funny, but that becomes something that I really look forward to. Uh, so it was a social aspect um, and also the convenience of it. Um, I think in the early part of when I started writing, something that was uh, a warped perception in my head is I always just pictured that if I didn't drive there, it was gonna, it was gonna be so far away. Um, you know, if I got on that bike, it was going to be so far away. Uh, and I was really surprised as I started to ride around places, how much closer they actually ended up feeling. Um, we actually went to dinner with some family and, uh, we were going to ride, uh, go from our house to the place that we were going to eat dinner. It was like around a mile away. Um, and so we were kind of curious, they were going to drive and we were on the bicycle. Um. And so we were kind of curious who was going to make it first. It became a little bit of a, okay, we're going to see who makes it first. Uh, and so um, we left. We weren't really riding that fast, you know, really riding at a very comfortable pace. Um, but we could take a little bit more of a direct route. Um, and then when we got there, they they had actually pulled into the area slightly before us, but they still had to park. So we, we went ahead and um, parked our bicycles, chained them to the um, the fence next to where we were eating and got a table and sat down. And then they walked up after parking the car and they were like, Oh, we beat you. Uh, and, and we were like, no, no, you just, you're walking up now. And they're like, well, we had to park. Um, but you know, that extra time parking and when it was factored in, we actually ended up on the bicycle, believe it or not, making it, um, before they made it, which was, which it was kind of a fun thing, but it's something that in my head was a warped perception before that it was going to take longer to get places, um, the other thing convenience wise, we have uh, kids and it turns out it's really hard to get them all in their car seats in a car, but uh, we have a, a Yuba bicycle that um, it's actually really convenient for them all to just jump on and off um, and they love it. They've, they've come to associate bicycles with uh, freedom and getting places. Um, and so they, they love to jump on it and go places. It's a lot less uh, of a challenge there. Um, so I kind of, this was kind of the honeymoon phase of of me riding around places. I was really excited about these social connections and the convenience aspect, and um, it was really enjoyable. Um, I kind of hit a point where, you know, it was this slough of despair. As, as I started to do that, and as I started to ride more places, um, I encountered places I didn't really feel very safe, um, or I had uh, an interaction with a driver that um, 
you know, made me a little bit nervous. Uh, and, and I, I, I think it all kind of peaked in this one instance where I was, uh, writing and it wasn't a great infrastructure situation because somebody was turning right and I was on a path on the side of the road coming towards them. So they were looking off to their left, but I was coming from their right. And they, I was pretty sure they saw me, but they pulled out anyway. And it's it's tough to tell if they ever saw you, you know, um, but I came really close to getting hit by, by the truck. And I just, I felt just so angry at that time, um, you know, and partly because, you know, you had a close in a call um, and, you know, angry just that the, the place felt like it wasn't built for me to be there. Um, and this was another pivotal moment in my journey where I started to realize that a lot of the things that I enjoyed about bicycling and the, the joy that I got from it um, was going to get uh, stolen from me if, if I let myself just focus on sort of the anger um, towards uh, whatever I perceived as being a challenge around me um, or, you know, whatever work it seemed like we needed yet to be done. Um, so at that point, I kind of tried to retool my thinking and um, not bury those feelings, but kind of just have, you know, compassion for them that like, okay, yes, I'm feeling upset about this, but I don't want it to steal the joy that I'm getting from, from going places, uh, on my bicycle. Um, so that was kind of, you know, I hit it, hit a low point and, and then that kind of leads us to today where, um, I I'm riding around most places around town, um, uh, here in Fishers for our, the things we need to do day to day. I live and work in Fishers. So, um, about 90% five percent or more of the places uh, that I need to go um, we can get to uh, for example like here's 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 one of the setups that we use to get groceries uh, the, those children carriers actually are really convenient um, for doing this because you can actually lay down this the seat in those and then just pack it full of groceries um, later on we ended up getting a, a, a Yuba so this is this is kind of our most latest way we get groceries here um, yeah. And so I think one of the, the where, where we're at now is, is, you know, riding around those places in town. Um, you still have to, I still often when I'm going someplace have to look it up on Google Maps. Um, you know, so a great tool is like you can kind of plot, plot your course on the satellite view of Google Maps. Um, and then something that's nice to do is uh, bike parking and figuring out where you can park is sometimes a challenge, uh, or whether or not they have a bike rack. Uh, so sometimes if you look in the photos, uh, or reviews of a place, somebody will have posted a picture of the bike rack. And I try to do that sometimes for the next person so that, you know, when they're looking, <laughs> trying to figure out if they can ride their bike, they might be able to find a picture of a bike rack. Um, also something that's cool that I've noticed going on around central Indiana is, um, sometimes bike parking is tagged on Google maps. Um, and I've been trying to tag some of that around, uh, Fishers as well. So if you just search for bike parking, sometimes, um, you can find some locations on Google maps of, of places you can park your bike. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's my story and kind of where I am today. All right. We have a couple of questions in the chat, so I'm going to go back to the beginning of chat. Um, there was a question if Indigo has updated their bike racks to fit larger e-bikes. So I did not know the answer to that question. Either Pete or anybody else on the call might know that. Um, yeah, I have not seen. I've not seen that they've upgraded those. I've I've often wondered if those racks would hold a, yeah, an e-bike. I'm I'm questioning that, but they're pretty beefy. I don't know. It just depends. I mean, my my commuter bike probably weighs sixty pounds, but e-bikes will be up, you know, more than that. So. Yeah, some of the e-bikes, it depends on the e-bike, because some of them are a lot lighter now than they used to be. But um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't, I think it would be difficult to get like a Yuba on them, just because yeah. of the longer wheel wheelbase. Um, so cargo bikes also right. would not work on that. Um, right. Yeah, somebody mentioned tire width. I know I run, I've run like 40 40s before that fit, but those real fat tire bikes, I wonder if a fat tire bike would fit. Yeah. Tight. Yeah, the really big fat tire, I'm not sure. And then there are some questions about um, Ross about the bicycle, the extra bicycle seat, and why is the seat so extended downwards? Um, 
and what age kids you have on the little seat in front of you. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, they, I think I've got some pictures of that around here too. Let me see if I can, uh, the seat on the front, uh, there's a couple of seats that we have there, um, on the one bike, uh, <laughs> There's a uh, Doolittle. Uh, there's a company called Doolittle, which I'll I'll post the link to that in the chat here. But um, it's uh, a company in New Zealand that makes it, and you just put it on the frame tube, um, and it fits a wide range of bikes. I fit it on our mountain bike, and and this bike was sort of the dropped tube. Um, and our uh, youngest is five, and he still rides on that one. Absolutely loves it. Um, he just talks and talks and talks while he's sitting in front of me, and we're going someplace, um, and. Mm -hmm. We found for the the little bit older one, there's a Urban Iki, I think is how you say it. I'm not real sure, but uh, we got it from Holland Bike Parts, uh, which is a website that you, mounts to a uh, the the luggage rack on the back, and it's got extra posts to help reinforce it. Um, and so yeah, there we are moving a Christmas tree <laughs> around Christmas. I think the uh, the seat being back. I'm not. I'm not, I, I maybe maybe it was talking about like the angle of the seat, um, but I just I think partly because I'm sitting so upright, I've found it like having the seat tilted a little back um, has been more comfortable. Yeah. Do you find the um, the balance on the bike is significantly different when you have the kids up as high as they are on the frame? It's <laughs> um, not been as much of a difference as I anticipated. Um, it is it is a little bit uh you do, do definitely notice like it's a little heavier up front but um honestly you're all kind of cl relatively close together and um it hasn't been a, a big thing for me i think maybe it also depends on sort of uh, your relative weight so maybe if if you're a bit smaller it might be a little bit harder to hold the bike up um then someone asked if you have extra recommendations for exercises or stretches for just starting to ride I don't really have any at this point. I just, I just. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've gone back and forth on that. I really don't right now. I don't have a, a stretching routine, which I probably should. I mean, I think it's recommended that certainly people should be doing stretching. I think the thing you have to be careful is over the over stretching can be harmful too. So for me, it's been more of my, my lower body, typical stretches, like I've, my quad stretches. Um, um, yeah. So I don't know. I really don't have a, a stretching routine that I do actively right now, but yeah, probably you, should. you don't really want to stretch when your muscles are cold. What you want to do is warm your muscles up by doing the activity you're going to do maybe slower or, um, you know, thing, things like that. You don't really want to try and stretch before you go on a ride. You want to stretch after you're going on, after you've been on a ride. Um, so there are, yeah, so Roy also says to stretch after. Exercising for hunching forward so much. Well, hunching forward is really more of a bike fit. If the bike is fit for you, then it's comfortable to be in a drop position or be in an upright position. Um, I have a, a, a touring bike that has drop bars and um, it's set up exactly how I need it. And when I first started riding a long, long time ago, my bike was not set up and I would get pain in my shoulders um, within 15 minutes. And that was because the seat and the handlebars weren't at where they needed to be in relationship to each other. So I was, you know, really hunching down and I, you know, I was reaching too far and all of that causing all sorts of problems. Once we got the handlebars, so they were closer to me and higher up, those problems went away, you know, so if you're having any issues with pain, get a bike fit. Um, it, you know, it look, it, Someone riding draw, on drop bars may look uncomfortable, but it, if it's fit to you, it's not. I can ride miles and miles and miles and miles, like 60 miles, no pain whatsoever. Um, 100 miles at the drop of a hat with no pain with being on a road bike on our tandem or on my touring bike. 
So it, it really has to do with the fit, you know, being fit on the bike. If you're going on short rides and you have pain, then it's definitely not, um, not fit for you. Um, you can usually get by with a ill-fitting bike for a couple miles and not have any issues. But if you're doing anything longer than that or going to be riding for a long, long time, then you just, you need to make sure that the bike is fit for you. One, one thing I've found helpful on most of my places that I'm going, they're within maybe two or three miles or, or less. Um, so a lot of times I'm just kind of, you know, taking my time, but, uh, I've, I've found that like, sometimes I would end up just uh, pushing and riding real hard, especially when I'm riding near cars, like, I feel like I have to go faster. Um, but one thing that I've, I've personally found helpful is, um, I try to compare myself to somebody walking. So I think of myself more of like a turbocharged walker. Um, and then I feel superhuman, like I'm going fast and I don't feel like I have to pedal so far or so hard. Um, and so it kind of, when I get to where I'm going, I don't feel quite as out of breath or sweaty. Um, Whereas if I picture like, oh, I got to keep up with this car, or, you know, I'm, I'm comparing myself to cars, then I feel slow and I feel like I have to pedal real hard, but. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of additional comments, um, like an IB band stretch and figure eight stretch, mm -hmm. half stretches and the stretch after. And in addition to poor bike fit, a lot of times people will have poor posture on the bike, like mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, um, strength or have their elbows and arms locked which is one or two or you know if you do that then every every vibration from the um from the handlebars is going to go right up into your shoulders and just cause and, and all the way through your arms and cause a lot of pain so you you need to be in a position where your elbows are bent and relaxed and your shoulders aren't hunched up like this. Um, you know, there's so, uh, and elbows being out all the time. Yeah, so if you're on flat bars, a lot of times people will put their, put their elbows out and right. their head down. So that also causes some issues. The thing that I see a lot, um, and we're getting kind of into bike fit, but um, I see a lot of people have their seats way too low. Um, and that causes issues with your, with your knees and you don't get a full pedal stroke if your seat is too low. And a lot of times people do that because they want to be able to reach the ground when they're sitting on the seat. If you can reach the ground, unless it's a frame that's meant that way, if you can reach the ground and you're sitting on the seat, your seat is too low. Um, so again, bike fit. <laughs> So, yeah, um, yeah, I think and just following up with the bike fit, I mean, once I was fitted for my bike and I had my numbers, you know, I had my saddle height from from the center of my crank. I had, um, you know, the front to back of my saddle set. Um, then it got to a point where I was really focusing on the touch points on the bike, on my shoes and my pedals on my um on my grips and on where you know what on the kind of saddle i had because i've gone through i mean i know all of us kind of you've done this too we've gone through a whole range of saddles in our riding career yeah and when finally, you find the good saddle you keep it <laughs> yes yes and now i'm i'm dialed into that and i think as using your bike for transportation those touch points on your bike become really important on how you're building comfort into your bike. I use ergon, I now use ergonomic grips, which look a little dorky, but believe me, I, I don't even have to wear gloves anymore. For years, I wore padded gloves and I started thinking, well, do I really need these? And I've kind of got a setup now that my hands are comfortable enough that I can, wrong, I can ride pretty long distance without wearing gloves. It's, I mean, gloves are still a good safety thing because, you know, God forbid, if you fall, they do, they do help to kind of causing damage on your hands, which it's happened to me. Um, but I, I just point that I don't need them anymore. And I, I use, and now I, I use platform pedals. I don't use any um, cleated shoes anymore. And that's, you know, I know a lot of people love them and they'll use them for the rest of their you know, cleated shoes for the rest of their lives. 
but I'm to the point where a lot of times I'll, I'll use, I'll ride in with the same shoes I'm wearing to work. So I don't have to bring in another pair of shoes. And uh, for me, that makes my commute more simple. If I, if I don't have to bring in another pair of shoes with me, I know there are, there are riding shoes that are nice. You could even wear at work. And I've done that before, but um, it's just platform, platform pedals work the best for me right now. Yeah, there was a, a comment that, about bike fit for uh, next year. And I just want to let you know, we have had a couple of programs about bike fit specifically that you can find recordings of previous Munch and Learns about that specific topic. Um, so if you go to IndieBikeHub.org, you'll be able to find them. Um, let's see. And then there was another question. Oh, yeah. So daily commute are great physical training for longer bike transportation options to vacation by bike. And yes, that's yep. true. Um, so as, you know, just, just being active in general and being, you know, active bicycling in general, that is great training. You know, you don't really think of it as training, but it, you know, it's part of your daily life and it's uh -huh. something that you can then do and use for other purposes. So. Yeah, I, th I think it builds confidence on the bike too. being able just to routinely use your bike for everyday destinations. For me, anyway, it, it builds my confidence to ride in other communities that I'm not familiar with or go ride places where maybe, um, yeah, I'm not familiar with. I've never ridden before. And that could be like on vacation or even bike camping and things like that. So, yeah, it builds confidence for sure. Yeah, so um, I wanted to, there were a couple of questions about, um, or comments about being safe or safe, safely, riding safely and finding safe places. Um, I also, I want to put a plug in for, um, if you want to build your confidence quickly, riding on roads and interacting with traffic, uh, there is a class called Smart Cycling 101. There are league cycling instructors um, that can um, help you build your confidence quickly. I'm one of those people. I've taught those, those classes. I taught a couple of classes. Um, I think Pete, you're an LCI as well. Mm -hmm. And there are um, six new LCIs that uh, last fall became LCIs last October that are looking to have students. So that's something that you're interested in. Um, the other thing um, is something that I'm gonna be uh, featuring in a future, well, this coming newsletter for Bicycle Garage Indy is League of American Bicyclists has a bicycle friendly driver program. They've now created it. So it's totally online. So you can take it as a driver to become a bicycle friendly driver. And so, there are 11 videos you watch and then you take a, a quiz and you have unlimited um, option or unlimited times to take the quiz to pass it. Um, so, and so I, I will put um, information about how you can find out about those in, in the chat and the chat will be part of the YouTube video so you can um, all of those links will be in the description of the YouTube video for the link. So um, I'll try and get those in before we end. Uh, we got a few minutes. So if there's any other, um, how often are the bike webinars? Um, and so let me see. So there's a couple of links for fitting in here. Um, bike trained. Oh, yes. I wanted to mention that in two weeks from today is Car Free Day Indy. So if you're curious about doing any kind of biking for transportation and you want to ride in with a group to downtown Indianapolis, uh, Commuter Connect is hosting their Car Free Day Indy at City Market. So from seven to nine in the morning, uh, you can get a free breakfast. And from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., you can get a free lunch. 
they're going to have music at the lunchtime. I'm not sure what they're doing at the breakfast. Um, but there, there will be a couple of groups that will be commuting down um, to do that. And Indy by Cub has some maps if you want to try and um, meet up with them as um, we'll try and put which ones are going to be active that day because not all of the trains are active anymore. Um, but also, um, if you wanted to just use one of those routes to do it on your own. Um, I will say that the I learned from the bike train leader from Plainfield that that route is probably not that great right now um, during rush hour traffic. It would be good during non-rush hour traffic. And the Fountain Square route currently has construction on it. Um, so kind of have to take some of those with a grain of salt. We have a lot of construction going on that's impacting some of the bike, bike commuting. Mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, future scheduled talks. So the, the lunch and learns happen um, from February through October. And so next month is our last one for this year. And they're once a month on the second Thursday of the month, but all of them are archived from previous years. And yes, and Car Free Tuesday, Thursday is coming up. Um, we've got a bike train from the Northeast side, definitely, and a couple of others that we're trying to get confirmed. Um, and then I also host uh, for Bicycle Garage Indy Spotlight on Bicycling. Uh, and I've got one that's going to be coming up on the 19th of this month. Usually it's the third Monday of the month at seven. And those also are archived as well. And we're going to talk about upcoming recreational riding, um, some different bike events. So um, let's see. I think I've got all of those. Let's see if I can put so Indie Bike Hub org is where you're going to find archives for these and then uh, what was the other one spotlight and i will put uh, i think it's learn.bikeleague.org i'm trying to remember it off the top of my head um, where you can find the bicycle friendly driver program, as well as the online portion of the smart cycling. So you can take the online portion and then do it as kind of a hybrid. So you take the, the online portion first, and then you do the on the bike skills um, with an instructor. That's how I've been teaching it. And it works out pretty well. And you can find instructors on that site as well. Uh, I think that's everything. Um, any other questions that people have? All right. Well, thank you for joining us. And thank you to Ross and Pete for presenting. Uh, and we'll see everyone next, next month about riding in the cold and dark. So. All Take right. Care. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ross. Really good. Thank you. Good see you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.